Hi guys, so last time, natapos tayo dito sa example problem number 2. So ngayon, proceed na tayo sa next problem. Okay, so sabi dito class, the lap joint is connected by 320mm diameter riblets assuming that the actual load P equals 50 kN is distributed equally among the three rivets. Find A, the shear stress in a rivet. Letter B, the bearing stress between a plate and a rivet. And then C, the maximum average tensile stress in each plate. Okay, so let us first draw yung figure. So, ito yung dalawang plate, no? Connected by 3 rivets. And then, yung sinabi, yung rivets na yan is merong diameter equal sa 20 mm. Okay. And then, ano pa? Given din itong uh, length nung plate, 130 mm. And then, dito sa side view, ito siya. And then, sabi, itong connection na to is uh, acted upon by an actual tensile force P. Okay. Where the value of P is is 50 kN. Okay, ngayon, yung kinatanong dito class is yung uh, for letter A is the shear stress sa rivet. Letter B bearing stress sa plate. And then for C the normal stress or tensile stress in plate. Pero may sinabi class maximum. So, lalagay ko dito uh, sigma max para sa plate. Okay. So, madali lang ito class. So, unahin na natin yung tau. So, for shear stress. So, we know that the formula for shear stress is shearing force over D. Sheared area. Pero sa case na to class, di ba yung force na mag-shear doon sa mga rivets natin is etong force P na to. So, pwede ko na siyang lagay as P. And then, ilan yung mag-shear na area class? Ilan yung mapuputol? So, 1, 2, 3. So, tatlong area yung mag resist ng shearing force. So, that tatlong area ng rivet. So, that tau na equal sa P So, 50 kN, gawin ko na siyang 50,000 newtons. And then, divided by tatlong area ng rivet. So, that is 3 times pi over 4 times 20 mm squared. So, that's your stress equals. Ayan. So, sagot is 53.05. Then, the unit is MPA. Okay. So, next. For uh, bearing stress naman sa plate. So, bearing stress sigma B is equal yun sa, sa bearing force over AB. Diba? And then, sa case na to, yung bearing force na yun is yung P pa lang din na yan. So, P pa rin yan. Ngayon, ano yung uh, uh, AB? AB. So, ilang area ba dito kalas yung subjected sa bearing stress? So, di ba yung mga back surface na ito? Di ba sila yung makakareceive na uh, pressure or bearing stress na yan? So, tatlo nun. Ngayon, ilang ulit yung area ng class? So, para sa ganito. Di ba yan yan? Ulit-ulitin ko lang class. Para sa susunod, gets na gets mo na. So, ito di ba yung likod? Ito yan. So, di ba yung i-consider nating area dyan is yung eto. Itong area na to, which is equal yun saan sa dimension is diameter D ng rivet and then ito yung thickness ng plate. So, that yung area, di ba yan is DT. 
Okay, so mangyayari niyan tat tat tatlo noon, di ba? So that is 3 dt. Okay, so substitute the values. So 50,000 newtons divided by tatlong d. Ang diameter is 20 mm. Ngayon, anong thickness yung pipiliin natin class? So always remember kasi di ba dalawang plate 'yan. Possible kasi magkaiba yung thickness niyan. Pero ano ba yung binigay dito, class? Ito is 25. So, same lang pala. 25 din to. Yung thickness. Ngayon, yung thickness na to, class, yung pipiliin natin, class, always yung uh, mas maliit sa, sa ganitong type ng problem, no? Since dito sa taas, subject is sa force P. Itong sa baba, force P lang din. So, saan ba dyan yung critical? So, uli, uh, ulitin natin, class, diba? For a stress, diba? P over area yan. Okay. Ngayon, kapag if yung force P is constant, so, patulad sa problem natin, di ba, yung P is given na na 50 kN. Kailan ba lumalaki itong ano? Yung stress. Kasi yung ginagawa natin class, hinahanap natin kung saan malaking stress. Kasi yun yung critical, ano, section. Di ba? Mas malaking stress, mas critical siya. So, kailan ba lumalaking stress? So, anong relationship niya dito sa area? Inversely proportional, di ba? So, para mapalaki yung stress, hahanapin natin yung mayroong maliit na area. At para mapalit yung area, edi eh kailangan na maliit din yung thickness. So, sa case naman na to, same lang yung thickness. Pero kung sa alley class, mag-iba yung thickness, ang pipiliin yung mas maliit. Okay? So, sa case na to, 25 mm. So, sigma B equals... Okay, so sagot, 33.33 MPA. Okay, and then finally, doon na tayo sa uh, maximum tensile uh, stress doon sa plate. So for uh, normal stress, di ba? Intensile is normal stress. Pero ang sinabi kasi maximum eh. Anyways, yung formula niyan is yung force over you perpendicular area lang sa kanya. So, sa case na to, yung force P is yung uh, P na yan, di ba? Ngayon, ano yung perpendicular area dito sa P class? Ano yung perpendicular area? E di itong cross-sectional area na to, let's say, sa, sa taas na plate. So, ito yun, di ba? Yung cross-sectional area niya. Ganon din dito sa baba. So, yung cross-sectional area na ito. Yun yung area perpendicular dun sa force P. Ngayon, class, may sinasabi maximum. Kailan nga ulit napapalaki class? Para maging malaki yung stress, kailangan maliit yung area. So, ito kasi class is one possible area to. Ano ba yung area na ito class? That yung area niya, yung cross-sectional area is 130 by, di ba 130 yan? Tapos yung thickness niyan is what? Ito, 25 mm. Yan yung area niyan class. Kaso nga di ba, Ang gagawin natin para makuha natin yung malaking value ng stress, kailangan hanapin natin yung maliit na cross-sectional area. Pero dapat yung area is still no, yung perpendicular dun sa force P para masatisfy na natin siya na normal stress. So class, no, kung i-imagine mo, kung magpapas ako dito ng cutting section, dito sa bolt na to. So magpapas ako dyan. Tama ba na itong, itong pinas ko is still perpendicular dito sa force P. Tama ba? Or kung, di, kung titignan ko yan dito class, ito yung cross-sectional area nun. Diba? Diba nandito dito yung force P? Nakapag ganyan yung force P. Oh. Nandito dyan yung force P. Tapos, itong red na to, which is ito, na pinakita ko dito. Diba perpendicular pa rin naman sa kanya yun? Which is class, alam natin na mas maliit compared dito sa black. Diba? Yung area na to is mas maliit doon sa kulay black na to. So definitely class, yung pipiliin natin cross-sectional area is itong area na to. No? Paano kunin yung area niyan class? Paano kunin yung area na ito? So that area niyan is equal sa so yung length niya, so that is 130 minus yung butas. So 130 minus yung butas na to. So ito is uh, 20 mm 
Diba 20 yan? So, 130 minus 20. And then, yung thickness nya. No? So, ano ba yung thickness? Pipili tayo class. It's either yung sa taas sa baba. Si same, same lang naman yan. So, yung thickness is 25. So, this array yung i-consider natin. Hindi ito class ha? Okay. So, papalit yan dito. Uh, 130 minus 20 mm by 25 m. So, substitute natin yung value ng ng P. So, 50,000 newtons. Yung smallest area perpendicular sa kanya is ito nga. So, rewrite lang natin. So, therefore, makukuha na natin yung maximum normal stress or maximum tensile stress. So, that is how much. So, sa gut, 18.18. Then, MPA. So, ganun siya. Okay po. So, let's check kung tama ang ating sagot. So, 53, 33, 18.18. So, correct. Okay. So, next problem. So, sabi dito, Assume that the actual load P applies to the lap joint is distributed equally among 3, 20 on diameter bit. So, the same lang kanina, no? What, ang tinatang dito, class, is what is the maximum load P that can be applied if the allowable stresses are 40 MPA for shear in a ribbit, 90 MPA for bearing between a plate and a ribbit, and then 120 M. PA for tension in the plates. So, sa last problem class, ang tinatanong yung mga stresses. Tama ba? Ngayon naman dito class, given naman ng mga stresses, ang tinatanong naman, gaano kalaki yung force P na pwede nating i-apply sa joint na yan, sa lap joint na yan, without exceeding yung mga allowable stresses nila no, para hindi siya mag-fail. So, madali lang ang class. No, reverse lang yung solution, pero almost the same. So, anyways, draw ulit natin siya. Okay. So, same ang thickness. 25 mm. So, same yung width, 130 mm. And then, I'm subjected to an actual tensile force P, which is yun yung unknown. So, ganun din dito. Okay, so given, diameter, 20 mm. Ano pang given? That the allowable no, shear stress sa uh, rebit is 40 MPA. That the allowable no, bearing, ito lagi natin ng B, allowable bearing para sa plate is 90. And then yung allowable tension no para sa plate is 120 MPA so tinatanong is yung safe value ng P okay, so para masolve natin yung safe value ng P, P di isa-isa yung natin consider yung mga allowable no so gano ba kalaki yung force P na kaya i-carry until sa sumaabot lang natin tong allowable shear stress na ribbit so for for shear so, so that tau is equal sa uh, shearing force over shear area. Yung shearing force yung force P. Yung shear area is what? Yung katlong area nung ribbit. So that is 3 times the cross-sectional area. Given tayo ng tau 
40 MPa, walang P, tatlong area, so 3 of, times 5 over 4 times 20 mm squared. So, MPa, mm squared, so the value ng P is ano, in Newton. So, ilan yung P na kaya ng ribet para hindi ma-exceed yung allowable shear stress niya. Okay, so sagot is ayan na. So, 37699.11 newtons. Next. For ano naman? For bearing sa plate. Okay. So, bearing sigma B is equal to bearing force over AB. So, yung bearing force is yung P itself while the uh, yung AB is yung tatlong area nito which is 3dt diba so given allowable 90 mpa so p over 3 diameter is 20 mm yung thickness pipiliin yung smallest para critical so since same lang naman yan so 25 mm so p in newtons is Sagot is, ayan, 135. Ano ba? 135,000 newtons. And then finally, for for uh, tensile stress no, ng, ng plate. Okay, so normal stress is equal sa uh, force over the perpendicular area. So, sa case natin, class, ang pipili yung force is yung force P and then yung perpendicular area is yung critical which is saan ba mas maliit ang area? Pinakamaliit ang area? Dito. Diba? So, ito yung area na pipiliin natin. Which is paano masolve ito, class? E eh, di length, which is ano? 130 minus yung diameter 20 and then times the thickness so th sinong thickness yung mas maliit so since same lang naman so 25 so unit ng denominator is mm squared ayan so length yung 130 minus yung butas times the thickness smallest thickness possible so, and then unit is mm squared so anyways binigyan tayo ng allowable normal which is 120 mpa so p over 130 minus 20 25 mm squared. So, ilan ang P na kayang i-carry ng plate itself? Okay. So, sagot is ayan na. So, 330,000 So, 330,000 newtons. So, ibig sabihin class, no? discuss lang natin. So, sabihin yung ribet, bago siya ma-shear, no? bago siya maputol, kaya niya mag-carry hanggang 37,699.11 newtons na force P. Ngayon, para naman mauka itong mga plate na to, no? kaya kailangan niya muna hanggang 135,000 na force P. And then, dito sa, ano, para ma-exceed ma ma uh, ma natin yung allowable tensile uh, stress para sa plate lang, plate alone. So, kakailanganin natin ng 330,000 newton. So, therefore, ano yung value na safe P? Ano yung safe dyan? E di yung pinakamalit, di ba? Para hindi mag-fail, which is 37,699.11 newtons. Okay, so let's check kung tama ang sabot. Okay, so 37.70 kN, so naka-newtons tayo, so same lang, so correct. Okay, so next. So the 20 mm diameter bolt fastens two wooden planks together. The nut is tightened until the tensile stress in the bolt is 150 MPa. Find the smallest shape. Diameter D of the washer of the working bearing stress 
for the wood is what uh, 13 MPA. Okay, so draw muna natin siya kalas. So let's say ito yung yung washer. And then nandito yung bolt. Okay, so simple yan. Walang kulas. Then dito yung nut. Okay, so almost the same lang to class nung parang kanina nakasum in lang na connection ito class. So, ang ginawa naman niya, pinagko-connect niya yung dalawang woods. So, given the thickness or the diameter nung ng bolt, 20 mm, ano pang binigay? Ito daw yung diameter D na hinahanap, diameter nung ng washer and then class sabi uh, may given diba ang sabi dito sa system na to is that yung nut is tinatighten niya daw yung bolt in such a way nakaka-receive ito ng tensile stress na 150 MPa so therefore the normal stress na nare-receive ng bolt is 150 MPa so ang hinahanap is gano'n daw kalaki itong diameter D para hindi ma-exceed yung allowable bearing stress ng wood so Sigma B ng wood no allow is 13 MPa. Okay, so imagine natin kasi class. Uh, kung ito is pasikip ng pasikip yung nut, ba? So, palaki ng palaki yung tensile stress, ba? So, ano mangyayari? Kapag pasikip ng pasikip ito, lumalaki yung tensile stress dito sa bolt. And then, yung stress na yun is matatransfer doon sa wa uh, washer. And then, yung washer, transfer naman yung stress dito sa wood. So, ang tendency, kakasikip mo, yung wood, ay uh, yung washer versus sa wood. Possible niya, magka-crush yan. Kung may exceed niya itong allowable bearing stress ng wood. Okay? So, ito kasi, ito yung magka-transfer, you know, from washer to another material. So, may bearing uh, stress na nagaganap doon. So, tinatanong gano'n kalaki yung D para hindi niya madudurog itong wood. So, ang solution dito class is uh, pwede natin i-cut natin itong ano. Ika-cut natin itong bolt. Tapos, analyze natin yung top portion. Okay. So, ito siya. Okay, tapos ito yung portion na kinat natin sa ano, sa bolt. Okay, so anong sabi diba nakaka-receive daw itong bolt na to ng tensile stress. So, palabasin natin yung tensile stress doon. Ito yung tensile stress doon class. Okay, yung sigma B. Ah, sigma na 150 MPa. So, kung titignan natin to, nung naisulit natin to, E di kung may tensile stress dito, dapat may lalaban sa kanyang force. ba kasi kung yan lang yung force na nag exist dyan, e di malalaglag yan. Tama ba? So, sino yung lumalaban yung class para ma-maintain yung position niya? E di yung contact uh, pressure dito sa wood versus dun sa washer. So, yung wood lumalaban siyang upward. So, yun yung bearing, ba Yung contact between two materials. So, ito lalaban yan. Yung buong palibot niyan, class. So, dahil pabilog yan, so, yung buong palibot niyan, may mga contact pressure na acting upward. Okay? So, ang gawin natin, class, para makuha natin yung pinakamaliit na D, hindi i-maximize natin itong allowable, no? Na dapat itong stress dito, bearing stress dito, must be equal sa 13 MPa. Okay? Ngayon, Para maging in equilibrium ito, tama ba that yung upward force must be equal sa downward force, di ba? Yung force na makikreate na ito, dapat equal dun sa force na makikreate nung sa taas. So, yung upward force is due to bearing, di ba? So, punin natin tong force na upward. So, yung upward force is due to to bearing. So, kunin natin yung force sa bearing stress na formula. Okay? So, we know that uh, sigma B is equal sa bearing force over the uh, AB. 
Okay, so sa case na to, ano yung AB class? Yung bearing force dito class, edi yun na yung force dito, yung upward force na yan. No? Symbolize natin ng uh, upward force. And then ano naman tong ano? AB class, edi yung area na perpendicular sa force na yan or sa stress na yan. So ano yun? Edi yung masisilipin natin itong washer in 3D. So di ba dito nag -e exist yung mga uh, bearing stresses na yan, no? Yung pressure pati sa loob. Sana nag-gets na. Yung buong palibot niya. So ibig sabihin class, ang gusto ko lang sabihin is yung area na i-consider ko natin is itong cross-sectional area nito ng washer. Okay, yan yung area subjected sa bearing stress. So, paano kunin yan, class? E di, e di ano, may binigay, di ba? Ano bang diameter na itong washer? Yun yung hinahanap. Di ba? Diameter D. Ano itong diameter sa loob? E di yung diameter na itong bolt, which is 20 mm. So, this one is 20 mm. Okay, so kung i-re-write -re ko yun dito sa class, yung area na yan, that is area outer minus area inner or pi over 4 times yung d outer, so d squared minus yung area, yung diameter inner, so 20 squared. So the unit is mm squared. Anyways, so binigyan tayo ng bearing uh, allowable sa wood, so i-maximize natin to, so this one is... 13 MPA so yung upward force na yan over 5 pi over 4 d squared minus 20 squared so we can now uh, rewrite upward force in terms of this so that is 13 MPA by pi over 4 by d squared minus 20 squared, the unit nito is mm squared. So, yun yung upward force due to bearing. How about naman yung downward force due to tensile stress na nare-receive dito? So, tensile, so that is normal uh, stress, force over area. So, yung force na gagamitin natin, yung sinasabi natin, downward force na yun, so, ano yung area? Ito yung cross-sectional area na ito, which is pi over 4 times 20 squared. So, unit is mm squared. Anyways, binigyan tayo ng ano, normal stress. So, 150 MPA is equal sa yung downward force na makikreate. So, pi over 4, 20 squared. So, downward force now in terms of or ilan tong downward force plus. So, actually, pwede na natin masolve, di ba? Solve na nga natin. This one is mm squared. So, downward force in newtons is 150 times pi over 4 times 20 squared. So, sagot is 47123.89 newtons. So, ibig sabihin, yun yung tensile force na nare-receive dito which is to be resisted na ito mga uh, bearing stresses na to. So, dapat kung ano yung value na ito, yun din sa taas na makikrate dito. So, using this equation, so, upward force which is ito, that is 13 MPA times pi over 4 d squared minus 20 squared mm squared is equal sa downward force which is 471 23.89 newton. So kung ang unit nito is MPA, unit nito is mm squared. So tama na ang unit nito ng left side is newton, newton. So same. So anyways, yung diameter din na masasolve natin dito is in mm. So ilan ang diameter D? So, diameter D now equals, ayan, no? 
So, paki-verify na lang class using your calculator. So, sagot is 70.82 millimeters. So, ibig sabihin, ang pinakamaliit na D, okay, ang pinakamaliit na D na pwede natin gamitin without crushing the wood is etong 70.82. Okay, so let us check kung tama ang ating sagot. Okay, so correct. Okay, so hanggang dyan na lang muna class. Yung remaining problems natin, isolve natin sa next video na ipapresent ko. So, thank you guys and God bless.